My name is Peter Hughes, I'm the Curator of Decorative Arts at the Tasmania Museum and Art Gallery. Um, and in that role, uh, one of the fabulous objects in my collection is this incense burner um, made by Suzuki Chokichi, if that's how it's pronounced, uh, in the 1870s or 1880s. It's one of the most fantastic objects in the uh, Tasmania Museum and Art Gallery Decorative Arts Collection and perhaps in the whole collection. It's a tour de force of uh, bronze casting was made um, probably some time around 1880. Um, there were a few of these made by some of the leading bronze casters in Japan, to, specifically to tour international exhibitions. So we don't know how this one ended up in um, Tasmania. It was donated by Lady Ashbolt in the um, 1950s and uh, has been here ever since. And for many, many years, it was on display in what's now the Colonial Gallery. Um, a truly spectacular object uh, in terms of its scale, but also in terms of the detail of the casting and the refinement of that detail. Um, it represents uh, a mythic scene, um, which is actually the creation of the world. So the, the figure below is uh, Pangu. Um, he's the god creating the world. The sphere is the world he held together, held apart darkness and light, yin and yang, um, for, I can't remember how many thousands of years, uh, while he created the earth. And that's sort of what's depicted here. Uh, it's unlikely that the incense burner uh, were ever functioned as an incense burner. Um, so it was really made, I guess, refer referencing that form, that traditional form, but uh, in a much more kind of exquisite and exaggerated way than, um, than probably the more functional objects like that temple incense burners were. I, in one way, it's not made for travel in the first place, um, and also made to kind of represent a country, um, which is Japan, and to represent its kind of a technical and artis artistic prowess. In the major period, Japan you know, embraced industrialization, embraced the West, um, decided not to be colonized, but to, um, to basically learn from, from the would-be colonizers, and rapidly accelerate itself into, into a sort of a industrial technological era. Um, and in some ways, the sculpture represents that also, represents that, um, you know, it's essentially a Japanese thing, it's standing on the world stage, and saying, here we are, and we are Japanese. <laughs> We're not um, pretending to be anybody else. Uh, so this is an, essentially a Japanese story in terms of um, the mythological story represented. Uh, essentially, a, a a reasonably traditional Japanese skill in bronze casting, um, but you know, taken to a to, to a level that's meant to represent Japan as as uh, the foremost nation in this sort of craft, if you like. In uh, 1851, there was the um, Great International Exhibition in London, and that sort of sparked off a whole series of exhibitions. You can even see the um, the Expo in Brisbane in the 80s as kind of part of that series, kind of petering out, if you like, in the late 20th century. So um, these exhibitions were held in different countries, colonies. So there was a great exhibition in the Crystal Palace in London. They had another great exhibition in 1862, 20 years later, 10 years later, I should say, 10 years later. Um, and then various countries, Paris, Chicago, the Chicago World's Fair, that's a famous one, um, had their own, and Hobart had one as well. You know, I think it was 1893, slash four, because we're always doing that thing. And um, it's possible that this incense burner came for that exhibition or came to Australia for another exhibition, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, um, somehow got here because it's, uh, it's an extraordinary object and, and I don't think there are any others in Australia. Um, the only other one I've seen uh, in the flesh, as it were, was at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Um, very different design, but similar sort of tour de force of craft and art.